Welcome back to Movies and Cool Stuff, my name's David Craig and I've been thinking a lot recently about Valiant Comics. The Vin Diesel Bloodshot movie was unfortunately a bit of a disaster, but apparently we are still getting a Valiant cinematic universe sometime in the near future. So, I've decided to put my casting director hat on and pick out some big names to play some of Valiant's most popular characters. Now this is all just for fun, so do let me know what you think of my choices in the comments section below, and let me know who you would like to see join the VCU, because I'd be very curious to find out. Just one one quick note before we get started, I've deliberately avoided actors and actresses who already have roles in the Marvel and DC cinematic universes because we want Valiant to feel completely fresh and new. So without further ado, let's start off with my favourite Valiant character and the one that kick-started their 2012 reboot, Exo Man of War. Now, Arik's native land is Romania, so I was really keen to cast someone of European descent to reflect that, and I've settled on Alexander Skarsgård. I wasn't 100% sure about this choice at first until I saw pictures of Skarsgård in his Legend of Tarzan movie from a few years ago, and really he just totally looks the part. He's got that alpha male energy which I think is important for Exo Man of War, and I think he's got the acting chops to pull it off too. Let's shift over now to the world of Harbinger where I've picked out Dylan Minnette to play powerful psyot Peter Stanchek. Now I am not a fan of 13 Reasons Why whatsoever, but Dylan Minnette is a good actor and if you don't believe me, check out Don't Breathe, a horror film from a few years ago which he's in and he totally kills it. He's got a proven track record for playing troubled teens, so while I think he might be a tiny bit too old for this character, I'm gonna let it slide. Next we have another major character in the Harbinger universe and that is Faith. Now for this role we're looking for someone young, funny, high energy and a bit dorky and I think I've got a great choice. Beanie Feldstein. Now if you've seen Booksmart, you know that Beanie Feldstein can perfectly encapsulate all of the traits we just mentioned. Also she's a real up-and-comer in Hollywood with a Golden Globe nomination to her name, so I think she would be absolutely phenomenal as Faith. Let's move on now to Livewire. Now this is a hugely important role in the Valiant universe with the potential to span multiple films and properties, so I feel you want to go with an actress who already has a big reputation in Hollywood. I've gone for Naomi Harris. Not only is she a superb Oscar-nominated actress, who I feel would bring real gravitas to the role, but also she has been known to wear her hair in dreadlocks before, which is a big part of Livewire's visual identity. Let's do Toya Harada next, because this one's really easy. It's Ken Watanabe, obviously. In fact, apparently Valiant were close to casting Watanabe in the Vin Diesel Bloodshot movie. That didn't end up happening, which is probably a good thing. I don't think we want to get too bogged down in that continuity. But it does look like this could actually happen one day, and I, for one, am all for it. Speaking of Bloodshot, we need to recast. Before the movie came out, I said Vin Diesel was a bad fit for the role, and that turned out to be true. Yes, you need Bloodshot to be a big muscular powerhouse, but there is also a more sensitive, tortured side to the character, which I think Vin Diesel just couldn't pull off. How about Carl Urban instead? He's a bona fide action star, he's an intimidating presence, but he's also got a softer side, and I think he's a much better fit for the role. Let's do Archer and Armstrong next. First of all, for Archer, I went with Lucas Hedges, and let me tell you why. This guy is a real up-and-comer, he's been in a lot of critically acclaimed indie films, and some of those have actually touched upon the ideas of brainwashing and devout religion. Not only is he a great actor, but also he's got the look down to a T. He's even had a buzz cut before, just like Archer in the comics. I think he's a perfect match. For Armstrong, there's always going to be a temptation to cast Seth Rogen, and while I don't hate that idea, I do think it's the wrong call. Seth Rogen is funny and likeable, but he doesn't have much range, so if you were to cast him, you'd basically have to turn Armstrong into a version of Seth Rogen. To avoid making that sacrifice, I've got a slightly more niche choice, Oliver Darry Olafsson. He's an Icelandic actor, I first encountered him on a Netflix sitcom called Lady Dynamite. Since then, he's appeared in The Meg, Fantastic Beasts 2, and Joe Hill's Nosferatu. Physically, he's got the build right, he's a big, hairy guy, and that's what you need for Armstrong, but he's also capable of imbuing his characters with a real sense of warmth, and I think that's also crucial. So, not a household name, but I think he's a great fit for the role. Let's do the other two Annie Padder brothers while we're here, starting off with Gilad, aka The Eternal Warrior. Now, there was a time where I might have suggested Kit Harrington for this role, but he's recently been snapped up by Marvel for their Eternals movie, so he is off the board. Here's two alternatives. The more niche option is Alexander Draymond. If you're not familiar, he's the star of a Netflix series called The Last Kingdom, which is a historical fiction show filled with sword fights and big battles. Draymond plays a fierce but noble warrior, so I think Gilad would be a really easy transition for him. 
But if you're looking for someone a bit more famous, I'd go with Michael Fassbender. Yes, the Assassin's Creed movie did not go very well, but I think with a better script, Fassbender could really excel in an action-heavy role like this. And he'd probably have time to do it because it looks like his days as Magneto are officially over. Now for Ivar Timewalker, I wanted to go with a natural ginger, because if you don't do that, you're looking at dying hair or bad wigs, and it's just a recipe for disaster. I also wanted to go with someone a bit quirky, a bit offbeat, someone who would probably be good in Doctor Who, because I think there are certain similarities between Ivar and the Doctor. With that in mind, I think Domhnall Gleeson would be a great fit for the role. Ivar doesn't need to be some big muscular guy, he just needs to have some charisma and a bit of mystery to him, and I think Gleeson could provide that in space. Shadow Man was a bit of a challenge at first, but I've settled on a choice which I think would get people very, very excited. Lakeith Stanfield. As one of the hottest rising stars in Hollywood right now, getting Stanfield would be a huge win for the Valiant Cinematic Universe. Not only is he an acclaimed actor, but also he's really thrown himself into genre work before with the likes of Death Note and Sorry to Bother You, so I think he'd genuinely be down for it. Plus, Shadow Man's world is kind of creepy and strange, and I feel like Lakeith Stanfield has just the right level of eccentricity to fit right in. Of course, we can't have a Shadow Man movie without Master Dark, and for this role we're basically looking for a creepy bold guy. So I've gone fairly obvious for this one, straight to Hollywood's resident creepy bold guy, Jackie Earl Haley. I feel like this isn't a super bold choice, and Haley has definitely done these kinds of creepy villain roles before, but I do think he would do a great job, particularly if the makeup team got his look exactly right. Let's finish up today's session with the world's worst superhero team, Quantum and Woody. Now I've seen John McHale's name floated out for Woody before, and I think once upon a time he would have been a great choice for the role, however, he's just too old now. John McHale is 48 years old, he doesn't look it, but he is. And I think given that Quantum and Woody's stories tend to feature quite juvenile humour, I think they'd be better off in the hands of two cheeky younger actors. Look no further because I've got a duo that I think could be dynamite. Picture this. Quantum and Woody, played by John Boyega and Dylan O'Brien. Now, much like Archer and Armstrong, this would have to be rigorously screen tested to make sure the chemistry is right, but if Boyega and O'Brien got along, I think it could be phenomenal. Dylan O'Brien is a charming guy who comes across as having quite a cheeky sense of humour in real life, which I think makes him a great fit for Woody, whose jokes often fall pretty close to the line. Meanwhile, I think John Boyega is a really charismatic, high-energy performer who just hasn't had the right opportunity yet. Pacific Rim Uprising was horrible, but I think this could be it. Particularly as I feel like he wants to get as far away from Star Wars as he can, so the edgy, rude humour of Quantum and Woody could really pique his interest. So those were my picks to kick off the Valiant Cinematic Universe. We didn't get to every character today, but I might make a part two if people enjoyed this video. Again, let me know in the comments section below your thoughts on my cast, and please do share your own top picks for the VCU as well. Thank you very much for watching. Please consider hitting like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time for another video.